The planet we're used to today was most likely extremely different a billion years ago, was even more different two billion years ago, and most likely changed its appearance every once in a while. For example, we know that a few billion years ago, it's quite likely Earth was purple, or at least the oceans made it appear purple. This is usually referred to as the purple Earth hypothesis, you can learn more about this in the description below, but during this time, photosynthesis was very likely based on retinol, making the water appear this way. This is from Lake Hillier, one of the pink lakes in Western Australia. Then, about 1.8 billion years ago, Earth experienced a major glaciation period we sometimes refer to as the Snowball Earth. This was actually just one of several such events. During this time, a lot of biosphere on the planet seems to have reset, and once the ice melted and we found ourselves with a new Earth, this began a completely new era. And because of the presence of photosynthetic bacteria that relied on hydrogen sulfide instead of water, and actually produced sulfur instead of oxygen, the color on the planet and the color of the oceans most likely changed once again. Here, some scientists believe it might have even been black, or possessing some other unusual coloration, even making it appear slightly milky instead of blue. And strangely enough, today we believe that Earth remained this way for at least 1 billion years. But we actually know very little about this period. For one simple reason. Not a lot seems to have happened for that 1 billion years. Not a lot of geological activity, no major volcanic eruptions, no powerful impacts or asteroid collisions, and even stranger, the plate tectonics or continents did not change much either. It's as if planet Earth decided to just take a break for a billion years. And so when looking at fossils, this is actually one period that we basically know practically nothing about. Today it's known as the Boring Billion. The strange period on planet Earth where not much seems to have happened, and even the life itself did not seem to change much either. Or at least that's what we used to believe up until, I guess, the last few years. And, well, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today, once again, we're going to be discussing incredible and completely unexpected discoveries about that boring billion. Once again, there's a completely unexpected discovery, and here I think pictures will probably do it justice a little bit more, that in essence show us a ridiculous diversity of life that seems to have existed back then, but that we practically know nothing about. And all of this once again discovered completely by accident. With some of these life forms resembling something out of a science fiction story, not so much anything from modern life. But here there is quite a lot of evidence that this does seem to be somewhat complex life, possibly even similar to modern mushrooms. Or I guess more specifically, fungi. And so let's discuss these two incredible studies and what was discovered so far, and of course let's talk about what this might mean for our understanding of evolution of life on our planet. Okay, that last question is pretty easy to answer. We once again just realized that we know very little about how life evolved and how complex it already seemed to be approximately 1.8 to 1.5 billion years ago. And so even when it comes to trying to understand when some of the more complex cells evolved, there's still a lot of confusion and just not enough evidence to determine anything. But if you've been watching the videos for the last few months, you know that this is not the first video about the so-called boring billion. As a matter of fact, we haven't talked about this topic for many years, and suddenly there are several studies discovering something absolutely incredible about this period. You can find the links in the description, but in a nutshell, there were two major discoveries. First, it was confirmed that the rotation of the planet was approximately 19 hours per day, but intriguingly, it hasn't changed for that whole billion years. This was completely unexpected, but the evidence seems to be there. But second of all, there was evidence for an unusual life or unusual biome that seemed to exist prior to anything that's known to modern science. It's actually completely unknown what this might have looked like, but the science of this life seemed to be there based on molecular analysis. And it seemed to be everywhere on the planet, but was definitely different from any modern life and from any modern cells. Nevertheless, it seemed to be dominating the planet and was probably a large part of the biomass. And it's that last discovery that kind of takes us closer to, well, the big mystery. How exactly did the modern cells form? Eukaryotes are way more complex than bacteria or prokaryotes. But exactly how this evolved compared to this is not a very easy question to answer. 
Okay, we don't even know how bacteria evolved, but how bacteria then somehow transitioned into eukaryotes is an even bigger mystery. And so, discovering these unusual ancient organisms existing during the boring billion could provide some of the answers. Maybe this was the transitional stage. But that particular study had an obvious problem. The only evidence was molecular and no actual fossils were ever found. And that's actually the biggest problem with studying the boring billion. Because the earth was so quiet and there was no geological activity, there was also not a lot of fossils. And so we don't actually have a lot of fossils from that period showing us anything. There are fossils of bacteria and there are certain fossils resembling some kind of an algae, but they're extremely rare and generally do not show much. And so up until I guess this point, it was almost impossible to imagine what any of this life would look like. And then we have this new study. And once again, this was discovered completely by accident. The scientists studying this weren't even biologists. From what the scientists described, they were actually studying rocks, specifically beryl and topaz. And here they gathered this from one of the Ukrainian mines that's known to contain quite a lot of different gemstones. This mine is known as the Volin mine, and this whole discovery is now known as the Volin biota. But because they were actually studying the structure of these rocks using advanced electron microscopy, they then realized that completely by accident, a lot of these samples seem to also contain strange three-dimensional shapes. Shapes resembling something they've never seen before, and actually resembling what we might describe as some kind of primitive life. With I think this one probably being the coolest, and also being the one that's kind of difficult to explain. With of course the biggest question now being, so is this what that life looked like? Is this the life that was just described in that other study from just a few months ago? And is this the representation of the transitional stage between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So right now the answer is, I don't know, but I'm sure many of us want to believe this. These are essentially the oldest three-dimensional microfossils ever discovered. And this is like one and a half to 1.8 billion years old. This was actually present inside a relatively thin layer of aluminum silicates present inside various minerals. But even stranger, a lot of these appear to be multicellular. And some of them do appear to be quite complex. Here it was described as the fungi-like organism, but some of them also seem to contain some kind of a shell around the cells. But more importantly, a lot of these structures have never been seen before in any life. Definitely different from anything we observe today, or from anything in the last billion years. And in terms of size, some of these are pretty small, just over 10 micrometers in size, but some of these were large. Quite a few of these were at least several millimeters in size. The ones with filaments and with multiple structures seem to be the biggest. But exactly what any of this is, is anyone's guess. These are literally the first ever skeletons preserved in ancient samples that we can physically see and observe in three dimensions. Pretty much all of the other samples are usually from much younger animals, such as the ones from Cambrian Explosion. And one of the main reasons we don't really have any samples from before is for one simple reason. Skeleton. Anything that does not have skeleton is very difficult to preserve in fossils. Which is why all of the previous discoveries were just based on chemistry or based on interaction with the environment, not so much actual physical shapes. There were some, but they were extremely rare. But now we have physical representation of something that existed on a planet almost 2 billion years ago, and all of this preserved with relatively high detail. But I guess the question is, so what do we actually know here? So do we know anything about this life? Well, the only thing the researchers seem to be pretty certain about is where exactly this life might have existed, or basically what sort of life this was. And it was most likely terrestrial life, but not surviving on the surface, instead living inside some sort of a geyser-like structure, possibly hundreds of meters below the ground. And this geyser system potentially contained all of the necessary biological components required for the growth and proliferation of these organisms. So here they were basically surviving inside some kind of a cavity, possibly as deep as 2 or 3 kilometers. But because some of this water was extremely rich in silicon fluoride fluids, once the liquid started escaping to the surface, it almost instantly fossilized a lot of this life, while also creating all of the minerals the scientists recovered. With the main implication being that a lot of this very likely existed 
in extremely deep underground habitats, with many of these microorganisms very likely surviving and thriving right between the rocks. With one implication being that maybe this was not the most common organism that existed back then, and possibly just represented some kind of a niche, but because we actually find life in similar conditions on Earth today, comparing both in some of the future studies might provide some answers. At the moment, because this is just a brand new discovery, other than the actual pictures, there's just not much else. But the pictures themselves are definitely super cool. Just the fact that this survived for almost 2 billion years and is still visible today is already quite impressive. And because now we know where to look for more similar life, there might be more incredible discoveries from this unusual period in the next few months. And so until these future discoveries, check out all of the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Or I guess more specifically, fungi. Fun fact, every time I talk to my wife and I ask her, hey, am I a fungi? She basically laughs and says, no. But you sure look like a mushroom.